Hello and welcome to some Total War Free Kingdoms on my channel. I've been given access to a preview build and I'm allowed to do a total of one hour of footage on my channel. Uh, I'm going to divide those up into three videos, uh, each consisting of 20 minutes of a different Warlord. We're allowed to play three different Warlords. This is Yan Shuo, uh, which you see on my screen right now. We're allowed to play as Gong Xin Zan and Zheng Zhan as well. I might be mispronouncing those, I'm trying my best, I swear to god. Um, so I'm going to try and keep this introduction as short as possible. There's a lot of information here on the screen, I'm not going to be showing all of it right now because it's mostly irrelevant, well it is relevant, totally relevant. Uh, however, since I only have 20 minutes, I'm going to take out all the boring parts, show you all the interesting parts, um, and then when the game properly releases, I'm going to be doing a let's play on all these lords anyway, and then I'll show you all this stuff uh, in detail. So the only thing I want to show you, I am of course playing a legendary. Uh, and that's about it. Let's jump into the campaign. So as you might expect, I am editing out the cutscenes because again, that is something I will be able to show you guys when the game properly releases. I can show you now, but do you want several minutes taken up with cutscenes or you just want to see some goddamn action? So our first proper mission is to uh, claim Han Empire regions, defeat the Yellow Turbans and be wary of Gong Jin San to the northeast. And our actual mission that we can do right now is to uh, basically murder this fella right here. We get a taste of victory. Uh, which is, gives us a bunch of buffs and things like that. Before we jump into the battle that we can do right now, we've got some stuff we could do uh, with our towns as well. So currently we can upgrade our town or we can build a building. Um, basically this town, because it has a farmland, as you might have seen before, every single province essentially has a city and then a resource attached to it. So got a farmland here, this one's got uh, a salt mine, this one's got another farmland again. Uh, let's see, Yi is the farmland, the farmland here, just showed you that. This one's got a trade board and a lumber yard, so as you can see, every single province has a, a different resource uh, attached to it, iron mine right there. Um, so as we've got a farmland here, this is obviously going to be a bit of a, a food province, so I do probably want to build the government support here, which is increase our food production and income from peasantry, but for the moment I want to upgrade our, upgrade our town. Without any further ado, it's time to murder this man right here. We're going to jump straight into the battle. Right, so I'm going to shove my archers up front, my kind of heavy glaive infantry behind them, my spears behind them, cavalry off to the side as you might expect. Yan Shao in the middle, and the reason for this, he's a commander first of all, so he's got interesting buffs and things like that. But mostly, as you'll see in a moment when I show you, he's got an ability called Stone Bulwark, which gives him a plus 100% range block chance for 30 seconds. So during those 30 seconds, your men do not take damage from ranged, which is insane. It's got a massive bubble as well, um, and it, it is incredibly strong. Uh, I should mention, I am playing this live. I'm playing this at home, uh, not at an event like I was in January, which is nice. Uh, I, I Because, you know, I'm, I'm able to do live commentary as opposed to back then when I had to do uh, post commentary, essentially. But on the other hand, it also makes me feel very rushed, you know, because I only have 20 minutes or I got to edit it up into 20 minutes. So I need to show as much as possible in a very short amount of time, if you will. Um, and it's difficult for me to do because I want to show you guys so much. But don't worry, when the game releases, like I said, I'll be doing an incredible amount of videos. All right, Yan Shao is actually being... Um, I think he's not very good at finding generals. I actually, I'm going to decline that one. But I'm going to say, why don't you target him instead? Because he's my killing machine. I'm meanwhile going to move the rest of my army up because I want to start shooting at their uh, dudes up there. So, um, Wen Chao, who is our second general essentially, he's got a special ability, which is Binding Fury. A melee attack which does 15k splash damage. I'm going to use it right here. You'll see what happens because you'll see this man's health drop by quite a bit right there. So pretty solid right there. We've meanwhile also started firing at the Saber Militia and the Archer Militia. Um, I have the trails on because unfortunately uh, it's either on or you just don't see the, the arrows at all. Unfortunately the days of Shogun 2 arrow trails are just gone uh, and it's this weird bluish arrow now but so be it. I'm also playing on the extreme unit size as you can see 240 men in each unit and the cavalry are 60 men. Cavalry in this game though are insanely good like I you know Medieval 2 cavalry was good, Attila cavalry was good, this game holy shit there's only 60 of them. But they absolutely demolish. You'll see it in a moment. I'll show you. Don't worry. It's absolutely fantastic. Alright, there goes their lord. I may have charged the cavalry forward a little bit too soon. But you'll still see the power of cavalry right here. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that number. What was that just now? 240? Just take that. Just got a, a hundred men right there. Routed it. 
these two are both routed, just that one going over there, now that's not routed. So, um, yeah, cavalry are pretty strong. Uh, and again, these are low tier archer units, so, that, 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 to be fair, but even then. Alright, there's uh, 122 saber cav right here, or saber militia, sorry. Absolutely gone. Where, where did they go, actually? Down to six men. Cavalry are pretty solid. Absolutely demolished. Nicely done. Got a little bit of money, lost 38 men, not too shabby. I could take the replenishment to go full right away, but we don't really need it, so I'm actually going to ransom right now. Get a little bit of money back. They're still dead anyway, it's just for the money. And then our mission is complete. Got a reward, and our next mission is to capture Yi farmland, which is right here. Which we'll do right away, because why not? We are also friends with Wen Chao. We fought side by side in battle together. We utterly dev devastated the enemy's forces. So things like this will happen. People will become better friends, uh, which is, you know, always a good thing. So time to take Yi farmland. The farmland has been taken. Lost a few more men this time around, but not a problem. So as you can see, we've got a couple of options here. The Occupy, Loot and Occupy, and Sack and Withdrawal options you'll be familiar with from previous Total War games, but Secure and Occupy is a little bit different. So, as Yan Shao, we have uh, a different... Well, every Lord has a unique kind of government, or... Not necessarily government, but, you know, a, a, a unique uh, attribute to them, and in this case, it is Lineage. So, as Yan Shao, we can um, extend or expand our Lineage, uh, which gives us j uh, bonuses throughout the campaign, I can show you in a minute. Um, we can expend it to um, secure and occupy, which gives us some bonuses here, but of course our lineage goes down, so we get different, we reduce other bonuses basically. I'm in this case going to just uh, loot and occupy. I don't care about the population loss because uh, it's only 3k, which is uh, basically nothing here. Uh, and settlement level we will reduce doesn't matter either because it's only a level 1 town, so it doesn't actually do anything. So I'm going to take the extra bit of income essentially. We lose the faction support, but that's going to go up, no problem. So loot and occupy, which gets us support from people. The people love some looting. It's great. Um, and our next mission is to construct or upgrade a building in Yi Town, which is what we're currently doing, so that works out well. Got some bonus experience for Yan Shao as well, which is always nice. Uh, we secured the commandery, and all these other things happened, which is great. The town is, or the farmland, I should say, is slightly busted, but that's okay. That's going to repair over time. We could repair it ourselves, but it's going to get fixed uh, in a single turn anyway, so that doesn't really matter. So here you can see our lineage. So if it's down here, it's tarnished, uh, which means we don't really get any good bonuses from it. If it's respectable, uh, it goes down faster, but you get more replenishment and recruitment cost uh, reduction for Captain Retinues. And when it's honor all the way up to honorable, you get 10% replenishment and 20% reduction uh, cost for, sorry, recruitment cost reduction for Captain Retinues. Captain Retinues is something I can show you next turn. We're not actually allowed to recruit on the first turn, which I think is a nice little feature. So that's going to be that for this turn. No, it's not. We've got some uh, diplomacy to, done, uh, to be done to do as well. I can't speak anymore. I'm trying to speak fast because, again, I, I want to just tell you guys as much as possible, but it's difficult to do so. Um, trade agreements. Let's see who uh, would be interested uh, at all. We've got Wang Kuang, Han Fu, and Gao Chan, uh, Gao Gan even, who would say yes. Uh, Han Fu is the best one. These two are north. He's got a pretty good attitude uh, with us. Um, I think I'm going to... Yeah, you know what? Let's, uh, let's do that. Let's negotiate with him. Uh, we're going to negotiate that because that's plus 2.2. I want to get some money out of that as well. So I'm going to make him pay me. Uh, a regular payment is worth less than a immediate payment. So if you want to get more money out of someone, you essentially ask them for a regular payment rather than immediate payment because you can get more out of them for sure. So in this case, uh, make a regular payment. So in order to make a regular payment, request a regular payment. Um, we can get, uh, for example, let's just see how far we can go with this. So this is already, oh, that's a big jump all of a sudden. So let's say like 81 or so, I think should be, yeah, 81. So that would be 810, right? Over 10 turns. If we just asked him for a regular payment, you can see that this is, there you go, nowhere near 800, right? So it's somewhere between 272 and 245. So you can see how you can get a lot more money from uh, regular payments. What does it say, 81 again? I think it was. There you go. So I'm going to ask him that. So he's going to pay me 810, essentially, over 10 turns. Thank you very much. And we get trade out of it, which is another 300 and something per turn as well. So our income's just flown up. Very useful. Now, uh, with that out of the way, let's uh, end turn a couple times. 
So one other thing I can show you guys is assignments. So in each province, or each commandery as they're called in this game, you can do some assignments. In this case we can do two in Yi. So, for example, this guy can increase our income from commerce, silk and spice, uh, spices. Sorry. Uh, this guy can uh, decrease our mustering turns, uh, increase our replenishment, or we can get our peasantry income increased by 50% by these people. So I know I'm going to be recruiting an army soon, so I'm going to use him to increase my replenishment by 15%. Because then when I start recruiting my army, uh, I will be able to replenish them much faster. Because, of course, rep uh, recruitment in this game works differently than in previous Total War games. It works the same as in Thrones of Britannia. You recruit a unit, it comes at you uh, on, like, I don't know, 10% strength or something like that, 20% strength, something like that. Um, and then it replenishes over time. So you don't, you, like, you don't wait a turn to get a unit, you get it immediately, but you only get a small portion of it, and then it replenishes over time. But Cao Cao has uh, come to us with... A deal. He wants to buy my mathematician, which is a fairly solid uh, for cunning, for reserves, faction wide, but only if the character's prime minister, heir, or faction leader. He's going to pay me a fair amount of money for it, but I'm not really looking for money right now. I'm not going to make Cao Cao stronger than he already is, so let's just uh, reject that. Sorry, it's Cao Cao. Better luck next time. Right, so it's time, first of all, to do our reform. So we have a reform already unlocked you've probably seen this tree before but if you haven't basically everything is color coded so you can see here blue is philosophy and trade purple is infrastructure and economy uh yellow slash orange is government reforms this is military and this is agriculture so you can see how uh basically you immediately in the blink of an eye see okay i want to go for something military i'm going down this tree here i want to go for something peasant related i want to increase my income happiness stuff like that well not happiness but um you go down this way stuff like that so for now i think since we already have a register of land and population um immediately we got this for free essentially from turn one um we've, since we've already got unlocked we can increase our income from all sources by 10 percent, which is pretty solid uh so i'm gonna go for that i'm gonna issue that uh, reform and then in five turns we can choose another one while we're here i'm also going to recruit units so now one thing that is unique to yan Shao is uh, his ability to recruit captains um i think i'm don't quote me on this but i'm pretty sure he's the only person who can do that because it's one of his special things uh, as a lineage but i'm i'm not 100 sure about that um either way uh so normally you could obviously recruit a captain or sorry a character into an army um and then you know you got to you know, mix and match a little bit, and then the characters level up, and it's, you know, it's good in general, because you want your characters to level up, um, and, and they get better over time, whereas if you just recruit a captain, you know, that's that. He's not going to get any better, but the positive thing about a captain is that you recruit them, you immediately get this entire detachment or, or you know, th this this whole uh, retinue uh, with them. So if I wanted to recruit this arch captain, which I do, uh, I'm going to get him. He is an actual unit as well, as you can see down there. He's 240 archers himself too, because he's not uh, a single, you know, character. He's not a character, he's a captain. So he's got 240 men in his own uh, unit, and then he's got all the other archers too, and then you get a couple G militia as well. Now the one downside of captains is that this is what you get. I cannot then say, I want more archers, so I'm going to remove these G militia and recruit some archers in their stead. You cannot do that this is what you get but it's a very easy way of getting a very an army very quickly uh, and relatively cheaply as well because if i wanted to recruit a character i only get two units and it's generally more expensive anyway like jantan my son uh costs 1450 more upkeep as well but obviously you get better units out of it uh, but i want this archer captain so i'm going to take him be like yo you want to join my force uh, and you can see we're rec replenishing very quickly right now because of all the bonuses we've got and we now have a new mission to get 21 units uh, total. So I'm going to replace the last of our units, and then we're going to go on the offensive. We're going to go ahead and attack Hanai here, the city uh, belonging to the Hanai Empire right now. It's a level 5 city, so it's got a large garrison, probably an army in there as well. So we need to be fully prepared for that, which is why I need you know, a solid army to do this. It's summer right now, so next turn it's autumn, then I siege them out, and then the turn after that, when I would attack it, would be winter, and we don't want that. So I think I'm going to attack him right now, in fact. We're going to go on the offensive. It's a bit risky right now, because our army is definitely not fully replenished here. But um, I like taking a risk. So there is actually a force in there right now. Not a huge one. I'm going to besiege them. Uh, despite our superior forces, a crushing defeat. Yeah, that's fair enough, because we would be attacking an actual town. Uh, but I'm probably going to siege them out for a bit. So let's just build this. They might even come out towards me. Um, but let's just continue, continue to siege for the moment. See what they do. They might have another force in the uh, region as well. 
uh, who might want to join in on this. We're not replenishing, of course, so that's the downside of all this, but at least we don't have to attack during winter. So we're going to attack. There's uh, yeah, the four archers there, another three there, so we got seven archers, but not a whole lot of infantry. So I think, you know, it's going to be a tough battle, but uh, nothing's impossible. Alright, so apparently there was a battle here before, because there's a broken wall here. So I could use that to my advantage. So we should be able to murder that unit with, under the protection of Yan Shao's ability. Because you can see we're being absolutely demolished already. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Well, this unit was actually not in range of that. And that unit over there is actually in range of being able to fire at me as well. I'm going to send you in by yourself right now. Let's see what you can do. Because I know you're badass and all that. Just wondering how much of a badass you really are. Alright, looks like we actually both into range of that one and that one as well. So why don't we take the two of you, fire at that one back there. Two of you fire at that one there. The other one's walking into range as well. And in fact, why don't we fire, not fire at the wall unit at all. Just fired them. Okay, we lost that arch on the right already because they weren't in range of that. You can see the massive difference. None of these units lost anything. Just the guy, the unit who wasn't in range of our ability, completely demolished. And everyone else is getting up on the walls. These guys are getting absolutely destroyed. We are running out of ammo. Quite rapidly, in fact. Uh, I'm going to send you up. I'm not sure if we're actually being shot up right now, so I don't know if it's worth using that ability. Maybe using it up here is better. Why don't you try firing in there? You need to get into there. This archer unit is going to do a lot of damage to us, unfortunately, but there's not much we can do about that. I tried to send them down here, but they don't really want to, apparently. Oh, there's still a lot up here as well. All our infantry units are climbing up now, I guess. You're still having a grand day trying to distract them, not being particularly effective at doing so. But our cavalry is coming in now. I think I'm just going to send my cavalry in the back of this stuff here. So I need this, these guys to chase down all their archers, and then we're going to be totally, totally fine. Alright, we are losing men here now, unfortunately. I'm going to pull you guys back in case you get caught out there. Our archers are completely out of ammo. I'm just going to put them here in a line. Not got nothing left except for some cav over there. Got some rounding going on, but that's okay. Alright, our cavalry are finally through. Let's get in there, boys. We can finally cause some havoc here. If I charge in the back of this, they'll probably route immediately. The saber cavalry are getting low as well, so that's okay. I don't probably don't need two units for that, though, to be honest. This unit's gonna get absolutely wrecked, no problem. Why don't you start going over here and killing that archer there? That unit routed and just gonna get shot by all the towers now. Uh, Alright, cavalry, come over here. Alright, you guys have also reached that archer. Demolished most of it. There are some archers left here, though, so we're being fired upon right now. We don't really like that. We have successfully killed them, though. Gotta charge them through. They've routed. These are on super low morale now. There we go. Finally. Lost a few units, but that was uh, good enough. And then we have... This is one of the major like plot points essentially which is what uh the romance of the key free kingdoms like game mode rather than the records one thrives on you you get these missions and you get to choose something uh and these are pretty big implications on the gameplay which is quite fun from what i've seen so far so this is a pretty big one so we can confederate han fu which literally gives us the provinces uh, that han fu currently owns uh which we can see right here but uh, i think i'd rather just confederate so we're going to do that which gives us all of that shit which is pretty useful our income is pretty low right now because, of course, we own a bunch more armies, but that's okay. Um, you care not for Gongshin Zan's opinion. He can rage as much as he likes. The opportunity to begin the unification of the North is far more important. So you can see, uh, we also got a level up on the Yan Shaos. Uh, I really like Replenishment, though, so I'm going to go for that right now. I do like this one, too, so that'll probably be next. Remaining, Remain hungry. Okay, let's just, you know, let's leave this because this is all stuff that, again, that's going to happen once I do my full-on Let's Play. But as you can see here, we're on turn 10, so I'm going to leave it there. I think we uh, made a fair amount of progress here, mostly, to be fair, from uh, a mission that has happened. Like, uh, do you want some more provinces for free? And I'm like, yeah, all right, then. go on then. But that'll be that for now. Thank you guys very much for watching. Uh, expect the videos for Zheng Jian and Gongshin Zan to come up soon as well. Um, I hope you guys are enjoying this so far. I hope you like this idea of the first 10 turns in 20 minutes. Uh, I hope it worked out for me because I'm going to have to edit down like an hour and a half almost to 20 minutes. So I don't know how that's going to work, but we'll see. Um, <laughs> and then, yeah, keep keep your eyes out for more videos. And of course, when the game releases, I'm going to be all over this game doing Let's Play after Let's Play. I can assure you that. Until then, thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Have a good day and goodbye. 
Finally, if you are thinking of purchasing the game yourself and supporting the channel at the same time, please consider using 2Game, the store I am affiliated with. You get the game for quite a bit cheaper than you can get it on Steam. You still get a Steam key, of course, that goes through Steam like a usual game does. Um, you get a discount, you even get an extra 10% off if you use the special code SMARTDONKEY at checkout as well. You can do this from wherever you are in the world. Um, it supports me, you get the game at a discount, it's a win-win situation. So please consider doing that. Thank you very much.